Peace, Israel, and y'all bless. Thy righteousness is an everlasting righteousness, and thy law is the truth. Today's, uh, today's lesson, the title of today's lesson is Good and Evil Figs. Once again, today's lesson is entitled Good and Evil Figs. Good meaning righteous, evil synonymous with unrighteousness. Okay, so we can determine good or evil. Good is those who walk in the Most High's laws, statutes, judgments, and precepts. And evil is anything or anyone that goes contrary to those laws, statutes, judgments, and precepts. We will do as we normally do. We will go through these scrolls and verify the words of the Most High. So once again, brace yourselves, tighten up your jaws, do not turn to the left or to the right, or you will get hit in the mouth. We are to walk the straight and narrow way of the Most High's commandments. Now, we will turn to uh, Jeremiah chapter 24. Jeremiah chapter 24. And we will read the entire chapter. It's a short chapter and a very short lesson. Verse 1 of Jeremiah chapter 24 reads, Yah showed me, and behold, two baskets of figs were set before the temple of Yah. After that, Nebuchadrezzar, king of Babylon, had carried away captive Jeconiah the son of Joachim, king of Judah. And the princes of Judah, with the carpenters and smiths from Jerusalem, and had brought them to Babylon. So, Coniah, you already know the story on Coniah and Jeconiah. You already know the story on that. So these men were carried away captive to Babylon. None of their seed, none of their children, none of their offspring ever were to sit on the throne of David anymore. Verse 2. One basket had very good figs, even like the figs that are first ripe. And the other basket had very naughty figs, which could not be eaten. They were so bad. So here you have two baskets of figs, okay, that were set before the temple of the Most High. One is as good, righteous. One is wicked, okay, evil. No good cannot be eaten. Verse 3. Then saith Yah unto me, What seest thou, Jeremiah? And I said, Figs, the good figs, very good, and the evil, very evil, that cannot be eaten, they are so evil. Verse 5. Thus saith Yah, the strong one of Israel, like these good figs, so will, so will I acknowledge them that are carried away captive of Judah, whom I have sent out of this place into the land of the Chaldeans for their good. So, the Most High had to clear the house of Israel out of the land. But there were Israelites who were righteous, who were doing good. Yet, they had to be moved out anyway. So, they were cast out. But the Most High would seek to bring a remnant of those Israelites back for their own good. So they were allowed to be taken out of the land because they were going to be preserved. Verse 6, For I will set mine eyes upon them for good, and I will bring them again to this land, that's that remnant, and I will build them and not pull them down, and I will plant them and not pluck them up. To be plucked up by the roots means that you and your seed will be removed from the earth. Verse 7, and I will give them a heart to know me, walk in my law, statutes, judgments, and precepts, that I am Yah, and, there shall, and they shall be my people, to know me that I am Yah, and they shall be my people, and I will be their strong one or their God, for they shall return unto me with their whole heart, meaning that they will turn with their whole heart and their whole soul unto the Most High's laws, statutes, judgments, and precepts. Verse 8. And as the evil figs, which cannot be eaten, they are so evil. Surely, thus saith Yah, so will I give Zedekiah, the governor of Judah, says king, he's the governor, and his princesses, and the residue of Jerusalem that remain in this land, and them that dwell in the land of Egypt. So what you have here is Zedekiah. Zedekiah is taking over from his nephew Coniah, who was taken away, was kicked out. And as you know, it's out of Kanai. They're trying to pull a seed of this one JC. So Kanai was kicked out. 
Now his uncle Zedekiah takes over. Zedekiah, the son of Josiah. Okay, so Zedekiah has now taken over from his nephew, who is Coniah. Okay, and so the Most High is saying that he's going to give Zedekiah, the king of Judah, and his princes and the residue of Jerusalem, and all those that's remaining in the land and that dwell in Egypt. So those of us who went to Egypt figured, you know what? I don't want to be in this land. I don't want to listen to and do any of these laws. I'm going to Egypt. So they formed a band and a captain over them, and they went back to Egypt. And the Most High told them, we're going to see exactly whose word is going to stand, mine or theirs, when you get to Egypt. You should already know exactly what happened to those individuals that went to Egypt, that went back, that decided they wanted to depart from the Most High and his laws and go live someplace else. Verse 9, and I will deliver them to be removed into all the kingdoms of the earth for their hurt, to be a reproach and a proverb, a taunt and a curse in all places whither I shall drive them. And I will send the sword, death in all of its manifestations, the famine, the pestilence among them, till they be consumed from up the land which I gave unto them and to their fathers. Now, most High is making it plain as it pertains to Zedekiah. This is the governorship. These are the sons of David. This is what you need to understand. As it pertains to the priest, the Levites, the sons of Aaron. As it pertains to the governorship, the house of Yehuda, the house of Judah, and those who are of the scepter holder's seed, those who are of David's sons. It was made, made plain to David that should his sons walk after the ways of the Most High and keep his laws, that David would always have a man of his seed that will sit upon the throne forever. But should any of David's sons walk contrary to the Most High's instruction, the Most High was going to uproot him out of the land. Also, the Most High had a covenant with the Levites, the priests. And should they walk contrary, they also, the whole nation will be removed. So what you have is a removal of the leadership houses. Those two houses, those two families would be the tribe of Yehuda, specifically the family of David and his seed, who are the scepter holders. And the family of Levi, specifically the priest, who are the sons of Aaron. So once these two leadership houses went astray, the whole entire family of Israel went astray. So the Most High made it plain that what he would do to Zedekiah and those that remained in the land. So he had some taken out. Then he had some left. And this is what he had done to those that were left. And now will deliver them to be removed into all the kingdoms of the earth for their hurt. This is why we are in these many nations today. We have been removed into the many nations of the earth. We are the leadership houses of the children of Israel. And we have been removed and we have been stripped. And this has been done for and to our hurt. For we walk contrary to the Most High's instruction. So if you ever wonder why we are going through what we're going through in these many nations, not just in America, but everywhere else, it is because we are those rotten figs that could not be eaten. We are the leadership houses that became so vile, became so foul, became so unrighteous that the Most High had to kick us out of the land. But the ones that were of the good figs, the Most High kept them in, in close proximity to the land, close proximity to the land, i.e. your Palestinians and the rest of them that do not realize that they're in the house of Israel as of yet. And some of those that are sitting in Iraq and all of these other places, Iran included and the rest of them, the house of Israel has been scattered to the four corners of the earth. But there are those of the house of Israel that remained in close proximity to the land. And the rest of them, the foul ones, the Most High removed them as far away from the land as possible. Hence, we are over here going through what we're going through. So he said clearly in verse 9, I will deliver them to be removed into all the kingdoms of the earth for their hurt. That's why we're here getting busted in the mouth left and right, day and night. To be a reproach and a proverb. That's why they have a name for you everywhere. And they hate you. And a taunt. That's why they taunt you. And a curse. 
you're wearing them. Deuteronomy chapter 28. In all places whither I shall drive them. So this is the cause of our plight in the many nations which we live. Let me redo verse 10 and we will complete this lesson. And I will send the sword that is death in all of its manifestations. The famine and the pestilence among them till they be consumed from off the land that I give unto them and to their fathers. So we're going to be removed onto, into these many lands and we're going to be consumed and we're going to be killed because we're walking after idols. We're cho we have chosen that which the Most High did not instruct us to take a hold of. That is vanity <clears throat> and we have been given the Most High lip service. We want to say clearly, oh, we're serving the Most High. I believe in God. I love God. The Most High says clearly, if you love him, you keep his commandments. And many of those who want to claim that they love God and follow after God, when you put them up against the standard, that is the Most High's laws, statutes, judgments, and precepts. They don't keep the Sabbath. They don't keep none of his holy days. Don't know his laws. Don't know where to find them. Don't keep them. Really don't care for them. But they are very familiar and walk in the ways of idols. They walk in the ways of their enemies. They're familiar with their families, with their, with their enemies' holidays. I've stated before, the Most High has no such thing as a holiday. He has holy days and he has feast days. None of it is Christmas or Easter or New Year's or any of the foolishness that we see celebrated by the heathen in which we have taken a hold of their ways, their customs, and their idols. So many want to claim that, well, I serve the Most High. Have never kept the Day of Atonement. Don't know what it is. Have never kept Passover. Don't know what it is. And continue to go into the idol house of the nations and their idols. And yet they want to say that they serve the Most High. Have never kept not one of these laws. So, we in this Northern Hemisphere have been those who have been stripped and shipped away. Because we are the foul of the foul. Or the foulest of the foul. So what we are to do. For those of you who have taken a hold of these laws. Statutes, judgments and precepts. We are to bring the remembrance to the children of Israel. We are to teach this word. That we are to return back onto the laws. That we were given at the first. By the creator. We were instructed clearly. That we were not to add or subtract from this word. Anything new is an addition. So if you are believing in the New Testament. And any of that nonsense. You have certainly walked contrary to this law these statutes and these judgments and precepts. Now, <clears throat> as it pertains to these rotten figs, we have been instructed clearly in Malachi chapter 3. We know clearly exactly who is following the Most High and who is following Him not. Simple. We take the golden standard, the Most High's laws, statutes, judgments, and precepts, and when someone says, I follow the Most High, I do this, and I love the Lord, and I do all of these things, we take that standard and we put that standard up against them. And we will clearly see, does this man keep the Sabbath? Does he follow the Most High's dress code? Does he keep the Most High's dietary law? Does he keep the Day of Atonement? Does he worship idols? Does he go into idol houses? What is this conversation like? Does he, does he go to work on the Sabbath day? All of these things. We'll put the standard against them. And that's why many of the men of Israel, I have stated in previous videos, there's something that goes on in the house of Israel with our males. They refuse to step up and lead because once you take a role of leadership, that is a position for scrutiny. What most of our males are, they are cowards. They refuse to lead because with leadership comes scrutiny and also with leadership comes responsibilities. So when I step up on this channel in this virtual forum and decide to teach, I have to live that which I teach. And I'm to show my face <clears throat> and you're to hear my actual voice as I read these laws, statutes, judgments, and precepts. Because the evil doer, the evil man, is waiting for the righteous to fall. Because the evil man can't stand him. So when a man steps up for the house of Israel and decides to show Jacob his errors and turn him back to the law, statutes, judgments, and precepts that we were given at the first, the idolater and the evildoer, he can't stand it. Can't stand it. 
and would like to set tra snaps and, tra and, and, uh, and snares at the feet of the righteous. Most I said he saw this thing and it displeased him because the wicked is trying to set traps for the righteous. So if you decide and you should take up this mantle, teach these laws, statutes, judgments, and precepts of the most high, people are going to be looking at you. They're looking at you to fall. They're looking to see exactly when you're going to make an error. And they're looking at all types of ways to criticize you and to bring you down. These same individuals are not teaching the law, statutes, judgments, and precepts of the Most High. Refuse to stand in a leadership position because they don't want to show their face. They don't want to accept the scrutiny and the responsibility of being in this position because you have to live it. Most of them don't have the discipline to do it. And discipline is the main thing here because that is why the house of Israel has fallen away. Lack of discipline. The men not willing to step up and lead these people and to point out their errors. But what a lot of the men of Israel will do who are cowards, they are quick to point fingers and they're quick to criticize. This book has been here for quite some time. If the Most High put his spirit upon you, he's going to cause you to turn back to this book of remembrance, return to his law, statutes, judgments, and precepts, and remind you exactly who you are and what you are to do and how you can teach these laws, statutes, judgments, and precepts to show Jacob, the children of Israel, their errors and cause them to consider their ways and to return back onto the Most High's laws, statutes, judgments, and precepts that we were given at the first. However, if you are not doing that, and anyone that's doing that, everyone around him knows that he's doing that. So you can't ever just say, yeah, I've been doing this, because people are going to look at you, look at your behavior, and they know clearly if you've been serving the Most High and if you're serving him not. So when we decide to do this, it is a position of responsibility, number one, and it's a position that most men in the house of Israel are not willing to take. That is leadership. That is scrutiny. Because if you're going to take this position, you have to walk in that which you speak. Many men of the house of Israel can easily pick up this book and pick up this mantle and teach this law. What they will do, they will sit in the back, won't teach anything, but they will throw stones and criticize those who are teaching the law, statutes, judgments, and precepts of the Most High. They will criticize that. When I read out of this book, it's thus say the Most High. Not thus says Peter, Paul, Andrew, or any of these other Europeans and these Romans. I'm speaking the Most High's word. I'm speaking his truth and his commandments. And the evildoer can't stand it. So, we must understand in these northern Northern nations in the northern hemisphere, we are the evil things that have been sent away. Keep in mind that the Most High is forever merciful in spite of what our forefathers have done and in spite of what many of us are doing today in these western nations, walking after these gods that are idols, that are statues, that are lies, that are addition and contrary addition at that to the Most High's word. If we were to just turn back and rethink ourselves and return back onto these laws, statutes, judgments, and precepts, the Most High is forever merciful. So we are to remember that though we are far away and we have been stripped, this is just a message to you to understand exactly who we are. We are the leadership houses. We are those rotten figs. Now, of all the men that I know, I know of two brothers, two of them, that actually walk in these laws, statutes, judgments, and precepts. One of them I've never met. Okay? One of them I've known for quite some time. And he walks in it. He has even changed his name and has taken on the surname Israel. I've yet to do that. I will do that. I hope to do that here soon. But this brother walks in it. And so therefore... Regardless of who you are or where you are, you're going to know maybe one or two men that actually do this thing in righteousness and in truth. The vast majority of the house of Israel 
will not return unto the law, statute, judgments, and precepts of the Most High and have not followed it. For if that were the case, we certainly would not have been stripped and kicked out of the Most High's land. We were stripped and kicked out because the majority of the house of Israel and the children of Israel refused to obey these laws, statutes, judgments, and precepts. So be mindful of the big gatherings. Remember, there's only a remnant that will return to the Most High's laws, statutes, judgments, and precepts. That's where the small numbers will be. Do not be concerned with the 35,000 that's in the Christian church and wherever else. They're worshiping idols. The vast majority of Israel has done that and continue to do it. And that's why when the Most High plead with these nations, he's going to kill a bunch of them because the vast majority of them, along with the children of Israel, will be walking outside of the confines of his law. Anyway, Israel, that completes this lesson and the commentary on it. Good and evil figs, good, righteous, evil, unrighteous. We are the leadership house. We are to take up this mantle and teach the Most High's laws, statutes, judgments, and precepts to the house of Israel first and to the nations, those individuals of the nations who are of a contrite spirit. We are to turn back to this thing and turn away from the idols of these nations. Peace, Israel, and Yah bless. Thy righteousness is an everlasting righteousness, and thy law is the truth. Peace.